Rico GR3X, the packetable camera that I never wanted to buy, but I bought it, I've used it and it blew my mind. I want to share with you what I think about Rico GR3X, my real world review. Let's talk about this now. Hi there and welcome to my channel, my name is Tudor Matescu and I like to talk about photography tips and tricks and photography gear and all things related. So if you are in content like this, please subscribe now, now, now to my channel because I'll post more content like this. So let's get to the subject. I've bought Ricoh GRC-X Urban Edition, Urban Edition and why I've chosen Urban Edition because of the color because of the color i like more how it looks and i feel that my choice was right was right because this camera has beautiful colors depending on the light depending on the light but also it's a still see camera but more about that a little bit later so let me share with you a big secret that i was never able to see it online this is the only camera that can help me take vertical shots by holding it like this. So the way that I'm taking the vertical shots is very easy. I'm holding the camera like this and I'm pressing the screen. I'm pressing the screen. So I'm holding the camera like this and press the screen for the snap option, for the snap option. But let's say you want to use AF, you can use AF, you can use touch AF and shoot. You can set the screen to work like this and I can hold the camera like this and take vertical shots. It's so easy. No other camera is offering me this option. No other camera is helping me to take vertical shots as easy as I can do with this camera. Only for this I would buy this camera. Only for this I would personally buy this camera. It's crazy, it's crazy. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. The image quality of this camera, what about it? Well, the image quality of this camera. Lots of users are saying that the image quality is great, it's wow. And yes, it's great and it's wow. It's great and it's wow. Yes, for a camera that is so, so small, the image quality is great and is wow. But I will dissect the image quality in three main points. JPEGs and RAW files, lens character and sensor. Let's talk about the lens character. Well, the lens is great. The image that this lens is producing at good ISO and with good light is great, great, great. The image quality has a 3D pop to it, a Zeiss 3D pop to it. And this 3D pop is not visible just at f2.8 when you have your subject separated by the aperture and by the fact that you are close to your subject. No, you will be able to see the subject separated from the background at apertures at f8 and f11. These are the apertures that I've used in snap shooting mode. And my subject is not entirely in focus. It's not entirely in focus. It's in acceptably focus area. But the subject is still popping. It's still popping how I'm showing on the screen. So the lens optics for a camera that is so small is great. It's great. Some compare this lens with uh, Sony 40mm f2.5. I've used a little Sony 40mm f2.5 and I must agree, I must agree regarding the optics of this lens. Now, regarding the JPEGs and the RAW files, the RAW files are DNG RAW files, very easily to be seen on your computer on a Windows system. This is amazing. I really love that. I really love that. So you can work with the raw files very, very easily. But, but I'm very intrigued and I really love the JPEGs files. The JPEGs files. The JPEGs in black and white are amazing. Amazing. The hard monotone profile is amazing. I'm getting straight from the camera amazing pictures, amazing pictures, black and white pictures. And I also like the positive film. It's, it's looking in a special way. It's looking in a special way. So for me, the lens and the JPEGs and the RAW files are a big, big plus. I really love more, more 
the black and white files that I'm getting from this camera compared to a Fujifilm camera. I really like them more. So, totally love the black and white JPEGs. Now, let's talk about the sensor. I didn't make an in-depth review and an in-depth test side by side looking at the sensor quality. But I feel the sensor it's a little behind my X100V or even of my XF10. I feel the sensor it's a little noisy, it's a little noisy, but uh, it's not a deal breaker, it's not like uh, wow how noisy it is, but it's not like you are seeing on the internet and in the comments and in the forums, you can easily use this camera at ISO 6400 and even 12800. Yes, you can use it and I'm okay in using it in street photography, but it's a noisy sensor at that level. Yes, you have good details, good colors, good sharpness at those ISO levels, but the sensor is a little behind other cameras. And uh, I will make a comparison side by side and we'll see if my eyes are right. So the sensor is a little behind, but it's not a deal breaker. It's not a deal breaker. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. Yes, I would want it a little better sensor with a little lower noise levels, but it's okay. It's okay. I really like that grungy look of a picture taken by night and the JPEGs rendered by night again are looking very, very good. The next point that is very important is how this camera is operating regarding manual focusing, manual focusing and also AF. But let's talk about the manual focusing because this is the most exciting part of this camera. When I'm using this camera in manual focusing mode with snapshots mode, I don't have any leg, any leg. It's like using a film camera. I'm just setting the distance, I'm setting the aperture and I can press the screen, I can press the screen to take snaps or I can press this button to take snaps or I can fully press this button to take snaps. So the manual focusing on this camera is very, very well refined. It's like having a Leica film camera, a Leica film camera or Leica M digital camera because Again, it's very, very well refined. You see the distance scale on this camera and you have lots of uh, slots for different zone focusing options. So you have from one meter to 1.5 meters to two meters, 2.5, 3.5, five meters and infinity. And you can easily change between these zone focusing options by pressing the rear back dial and using the top dial. Also, you can assign a function button and so on. So you can very, very easily change and set your lens at the distance that you want it to be set. So it's like using a film camera. But more than that, you don't bump by mistake the aperture ring or the focusing ring because all is done internally, all is done internally. So regarding the manual focusing options, I wasn't able to use till now a camera that is so, so good. And the fun of shooting with this is incredible. It's incredible. I am liking to call this camera a decisive moment camera, a camera that will help you get the decisive moment. You don't have any lag at all. Just wait for the moment press the screen, press the screen and take the shot, press the screen and take the shot or press the button and take the shot. So great, great for that. Now regarding the AF, lots of people complained about the AF of Ricoh GR3 and Ricoh GR3 X. Well, it's not entirely true. The AF of Ricoh GR3 X is very good in good light, in daylight. And I like to take pictures with zone focusing in daylight, in daylight or with AF in daylight. So the AF is good and is responsive in good lighting conditions. But in low light, when you have the subject poor lit, yes, you will have a slowish focus and you can have some missed focuses. You can have some missed focuses. And for me, it's a shock how good the AF is in good light and it's much better than the XF10 AF, much better, very fast, very fast. It's almost as fast as my X100V in good light, in good light. But yes, in low light is very, very slow. But for me, this is not a problem because this is an F2.8 lens. It's an F2.8 lens. 
I will not use this camera at f2.8 to take pictures with fast AF in low light. It's, it's not designed for that. It's not designed for that. It's not a Sony camera with a 50mm f1.4 big with a big lens and with a big body to take even photography. No, it's a pocketable camera. It's not designed for that. You can use it in low light and I feel the AF in low light and all the options that you have in low light and especially the manual focusing options I'm showing on the screen will help you get any pictures that you want to take in low light. This is not a beginner camera. It's not a beginner camera. It's a camera for someone who is passionate about photography, for someone who is passionate for everyday photography, for someone who is passionate about cameras. This is not a beginner camera. It's not like, well, I'm taking this camera and point and shoot, point and shoot. No, no. It's for someone who is loving photography, who knows to take pictures or who wants to get better at taking pictures and so on. So I feel it's okay. It's okay. Yes, we always want better AF or and so on, but the AF is not a deal breaker. The AF is not a deal breaker. and. Personally, I like to use this camera like this. Now let's talk about some key features that Ricoh GRC X has on it. And these features are very important and sometimes I forget about these features. So this camera has internal memory, two gigabytes of internal memory. This is very important. The other day I was going out and my card was full. I was coming for my holiday and I didn't have time to copy my pictures on my computer and the card was full. I was lucky enough to have a second card. But if I didn't have that card, the only thing that I had to do is take out the memory card and use the internal memory of this camera. And this is a life saver. Next, this camera has ND filter, two stop ND filter and three stops IBIS, and three stops IBIS. So ND filter, IBIS, internal memory, extraordinary features that, uh, yes, they are making your life easier. Another point to address is that this camera has a hot shoe, so you can add all kinds of accessories, flash and so on. And also you have the crop modes. You can use this camera as a 50mm camera or as a 71mm camera in crop mode. Regarding the color, I do recommend this metallic grey that is reflecting light depending on the scene, as you can see in this video. And I really like this. It's very, very inspiring and it's looking great. But there is another trick here regarding the color. So this is why I like this attention to the details. This is, this is why I'm saying this camera, it's a Leica or like a Leica camera. Because this metallic gray paint or finish is very, very stilty when you are on the street. So, so it's amazing. When you want to shine, just put it in a good light and you'll have a very, very nice looking camera and choose the ring that you want. So let's talk about the ergonomics of this camera, of Ricoh GRC X. How it's feeling in the hand, how it's operating in the hand and the, what are my impressions regarding the operation of this camera. So regarding the buttons, you must change the aperture using this top button. This is something new for me because I don't have a camera that is operating like this, but I got accustomed very, very fast with this way of changing the aperture. So I really like this wheel. It is very clicky. I really like the mode dial that it is locked. It is locked and you don't bump it by mistake. I also like all the buttons and all the wheels. Uh, they are perfectly, perfectly put on this camera, on the layout of this camera. So all is nicely put and you can change and access all the buttons just with your thumb. And this is huge for street photography, for an everyday carry camera and so on. So amazing buttons. I really like them. Some call them plasticky. I don't feel they are plasticky. They're okay. They are feeling premium built if you are asking me. This is my impressions as an X-Pro C owner, as an X-T5 owner, as a Sony A7R C owner. I really don't feel these buttons are more plasticky than other buttons, than my X100V buttons or so on. No, 
The buttons are okay, are clickable, are nice. This camera is new, but I've broke it how I've showed in a previous B video. And the camera is operating fine. So I really like the ergonomics and the button layout. The next thing that I want to address is the screen. The screen is amazing for taking pictures and for navigating through the camera. It is very, very responsive, but I use the screen with snap focus and the screen is working better, better than a button if you are asking me. And I have Lumix GX9 and also Olympus OMD M10 Mark IV and I always felt that Olympus had the best screen for touch to shoot, but this is better or at least at the level of my Olympus camera. So the screen is working instantly when I'm touching it to take snaps. But I also use this screen with winter gloves and the screen worked amazing good, amazing good. So buttons and screen very, very responsive on this camera. All is working perfect. Also regarding the ergonomics, you can uh, argue that this camera doesn't have an optical viewfinder or an electronical viewfinder, but you can add an optical viewfinder to this camera. Yes, for an extra cost and yes, it's pricey, but this is a very, very well refined camera, a very, very well refined camera. And I feel the price for the optical viewfinder is totally deserving. It's totally deserving because it's a small optical viewfinder. It's easy to be taken with you and you can make this camera a 40 millimeters camera with an optical viewfinder. And this is important and very, very huge if you want to shoot with an optical viewfinder. And yes, I'm very tempted about that optical viewfinder. So you can add an optical viewfinder to this camera. And this is a big point. Another point is that this camera is very, very light. This is an advantage, but also a disadvantage, but also a disadvantage. It's very easily to drop this camera because it's very, very light. It's lighter than a phone. It is possible to drop it if you aren't paying attention to this camera. So. Please be very attentive because the camera is very light. Also at the ergonomics part, I would address the battery, the battery. Yes, the battery is very, very poor. I was able to get 150 shots, 150 shots with one battery, with one battery. So uh, yes, I'm stressed regarding the battery, but uh, the battery is very small. <laughs> this is why you can get just 150 shots but you can buy another two batteries and this is it. What we can do, they are very small and very light, easy to carry. So I really like the fact that, yes, they are small and easy to carry. And this is the concept. I'm okay with it, it's not a problem. But yes, you will need at least three batteries to be comfortable that you will have enough battery juice for a day of shooting. In conclusion, do I recommend buying this camera? Yes, yes, totally yes. You will not regret it at all. If you love photography, if you are passionate about photography, and if you know something about cameras, this is not a camera for a beginner. This is not a camera to take pictures of your kids if you don't know what you are doing. If you don't know what you are doing. This is a camera to play with. This is a camera to set it up. This is a camera that it's a tool in your pocket. It's a Swiss Army knife in your pocket. The way that you can customize this camera is amazing, is amazing. You can have all kinds of uh, modes and all kinds of settings just at your fingertip. But what is the most important part regarding the operation of this camera is the manual focusing. The manual focusing is a breeze, is a breeze. So I totally love this camera. It's deserving any penny. And I really do recommend buy it if you want it. You will not regret it at all. You will not regret it at all. It's a top notch camera. It's a top notch camera. And now, now I really do understand why the price. And uh, comparing it with X100V, I will do another video about this and we'll see if this is better than X100V and for this please subscribe for more. Thank you for watching this video, subscribe, like my video, share my video, leave me a comment 
and support my work by using my affiliate links if you want to buy something for you or leave a donation and so on. Help me as you can. Thank you and I will talk to you soon. Bye bye.